Hello everybody, I'm Daniel Jacobson. I'm here at Ultimate School of Music in Dublin, Ireland for Guitar Night Live. And we're a school that teaches guitar and music production courses in person and online as well. So you can do the courses no matter where you are. And uh, I can see Ben's trying not to laugh because if he laughs then we'll make sound <laughs> and it will switch to him. But I have to introduce him first. And a lot of you know who Ben Levin is and that's why you're here, but some of you don't know him yet because you came because I told you to come and you're wondering who is Ben Levin but it's quite hard to describe what he does because he does so much but he is really very amazing music maker maker of music and video he creates videos and he creates music and he teaches as well and he's very creative and one of his specialties is teaching about unblocking coming out of creative blocks so we're going to ask him about that tonight and about improvising and about expressing emotions and maybe specific ideas and things through music. It's going to be really amazing this next hour and it's also going to be a little bit different from the other Guitar Night Lives that we've done, which really looking forward to it. I'm really glad Ben came on the show. So thank you very much for coming. Ben, hello. It's Guitar Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> very happy to be here. It's nice, nice to enjoy the night at 3 p.m. my time. It makes me feel like I'm getting ahead of things. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm organized. I'm, I'm showing up early. But um, yeah, I'm so, so, so happy to be uh, giving a music performance course, t talking, teaching thing in front of people on the internet. Um, that I haven't done a lot of performing this uh, year. I got the bug, you know, and it's a chance to, to do that. You know, every uh, talking is a performance. We're always performing for better or for worse. <laughs> That's right. I always say that when I'm describing what improvisation is, when you're thinking about improvising in music, you're constantly improvising when you're talking because you didn't learn off what you were going to say word for word before you started talking. I agree. And, and I, I took that exact philosophy very uh, to a troubling degree seriously uh for most of my life where i would like i was such a music uh obsessive from like i'm still i still am but in a different way but like from 15 to like uh like 25 i was so obsessed with music that i felt like a converse a normal conversation was a wasted opportunity so um i annoyed the hell out of people but uh, I, I got this, uh, everyone would always think I was like on drugs or high when I was talking to them and I, and I was, I never was. And it was just, I was trying to like find a, a way to really improvise conversation. And ultimately it's funny. Um, I offended a lot of people, which I re regret to be honest, but at the same time, I got a lot closer to a lot of people than I ever would have, like specifically my parents, uh, because they, um, they don't i can say anything and not surprise them anymore I, and i really mean anything like uh and and the fact that i can just uh like have my sense of humor with my friends be the same as with my parents has been really helpful and i think it took a lot of uh, them just getting used to a lot of my conversation mistakes <laughs> over the years <laughs> i've toned it down a bit though <laughs> well don't tone it down any more here <laughs> yeah i've toned it to the right level i feel like i'm at the level now where it's uh it's definitely still improvisational but way less likely to make people physically ill <laughs> that sounds like the right level Thanks. very good we're getting <laughs> to uh positive comments on your shirt beautiful shirt oh yeah it's a nice shirt it's From... like a lisa frank type of vibe of a a lion oh nice it's a lion and Elizabeth, yeah. Li Isabella has almost the same guitar as you. Nice. Yeah, these are really cool. Um, they're like these Squire modern Strat things. I, yeah. I was really pumped about the price, but now I'm thinking that like it's so cheap. It was like $400 and it sounds amazing. And now I'm thinking, oh, maybe it was made by slaves. Like that, <laughs> that's the thing I've been worried about with like 
I'm always like, oh, get cheap guitars because they're really good these days. Why would you spend so much money? And when, just get the guitar you got and go. And now I'm like, wow, you lose no matter what when you buy something. But hey, that's a, what are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> you got to get a guitar if you're going to learn. So, yeah, well, they're definitely getting better and better for cheaper and cheaper. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. It's wild how good this is. Before I forget, actually, that was a really cool little car night live jingle that you invented there. And uh, oh, yeah. if you don't mind, I'm going to play that at the start of every one from now on. Sure. That's my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So before we launch into what we're doing tonight, we have a couple of things we wanted to tell you guys about. So the first thing is Ben has a course. I know you guys, some of you already are even thinking of doing it. It's a songwriting course it's called Getting Songs Done. Here's the link to that. Thank you. And uh, I'm also going to share the PayPal link of Ben, which is for you guys. If you want to tip him, send some money, a dollar, right, sure. five, I'm ten, right. twenty, anything. I saved a lot of money on this. So. <laughs> <laughs> for tonight, if you, uh, you know, think you're getting something out of it, then that would be cool. And the other thing is that on Thursday this week, we have a music production course starting, which is a four week course here at Ultimate School of Music that you can do it online. It's a live stream course. It's going to be on 7 p.m. Irish time on a Thursday, which is 2 p.m. if you're in New York. And uh, if you're in somewhere else, then you'll have to Google what the time is there. So it's at 7 p.m. in Ireland for four weeks on a Thursday. And it's 100 euro, that course. It's for people who've never done any music production before and they want to know how to do it. It's going to be using a free app, free version of an app that's available for Android and iOS. So you can do it on anything. And uh, that's it. Oh, yeah, there's a 20 euro discount code, Ben Levin. Put that in, you get 20 euro off. Thanks. Now. I am the discount. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what first thing we're going to ask Ben about is about the ideas when you're making music all the time. Are you, you're making music all the time. Are you almost every day coming up with new stuff? Yeah. Um, in a pretty casual way, like I, uh, it, to me, uh, making music is um, much, for, first and foremost, it's a w way of like, of being. You know, it's not always about products or like about um, writing a song or like having a thing to show. I improvise at the piano and sing and uh, I come up with all kinds of gibberish music that, you know, sometimes something will grab me and I'll record a little snippet. But yeah, I'm writing music uh, daily, but, it, but when I say that, it doesn't mean I'm necessarily in the DAW or at notation codifying some ideas in some tangible way and perfecting my craft every day it's not really that's not what i mean when i say i'm doing it every day it's more i'm i'm improvising a lot um and by a lot i mean like consistently some days it'll be very brief uh but it's just every day starts when i'm not on tour i go and play at the piano to kind of wake my brain up and if you have a lot of nightmares or stress about what the day has got for you, or if your alarm went off on your phone and you saw a ominous text, or you made the mistake of looking at your email first thing in the morning, these are all things that I fall into a lot that really can mess my day up. If I make sure to just go to the piano and play for an amount of time, it doesn't have to be long, I do find myself sort of waking up in more than one sense, just waking up, like getting less sleepy, but also feeling more ready to deal with normal day-to-day -day, um, stress or just like the unknown stresses, like the things that you don't even have a tangible thing to point, why do I feel stress? But you just feel it. It just helps. Um, so I think it's super important uh, to be doing that. Um, if you have an instrument, that's all you need. You don't have to be good. And I really, really, these quotes are like, this quote around good is very important. I'm I'm like a pretty big, don't uh, try to put yourself in dichotomies guy. 
not good or bad. It's always getting better than the day before and all that stuff that I'm sure everyone's heard that advice that you, it's about, you know, trying to learn and not necessarily trying to uh, achieve worth. Um, <laughs> so would you say that playing music is is consistently like it enhances your mood? Yeah, definitely. It gives me a meditative state where not basically nothing else does except maybe editing video or watching a movie. But I, I'm not really a meditator, not by choice or by, I'm not proud of that fact or anything. It's not like something, I'm, I'm not a meditator. Are you kidding me? <laughs> something like that. It's just like, I'm, I don't, I, I, if I plan to fail with improv, I'm like, all right, I'm going to improvise. No matter what I do, I'm going to, it's fine. That works for me, but planning to fail at attention is so weird. Just being like, meditating is like, you know you're not going to succeed, but it's about like, eh, I, I get that from improv, I think. Maybe it's a different thing, but yeah, that's why I, I choose to have the music be uh, be the, the way I go, go about that. And do you ever have the experience of sitting down and being like, I can't think of anything to play? Does that Has that ever happened? I can't think of... There's no ideas now. I almost never have ideas. I I have ideas maybe like, like it feels like maybe 10% of the time I have an idea. But generally what I'm doing is I'm reacting to whatever is happening. And I think that's how you get ideas anyway, is reacting to, if not literally the sound you're making at an instrument, you're reacting to things that happen in your life. And, but, but more most of all i think we are we are hindered by the idea of ideas um this is very contrary to some of my biggest influences like david lynch this is not how he would describe it but i i find personally like the idea that we have an idea i i should make that clear the the mind the mindset that we would have an idea and it would be so great that we should do everything we can to get it out as clearly as possible and push anything else that happens aside and, and go for it. This isn't exactly what David Lynch does, but he really is big on his ideas. I personally, I, I feel like this idea, that idea, whatever, the idea changes constantly. It dies as soon as you try to grab it. You know, it's like just constantly morphing. And if you, if you say, oh, I have an idea, something in my head, blah, blah, blah. And you start playing and you're doing something else and you're like ignoring what you're actually doing because you're like just so desperately trying to get that idea. I think that's, then you miss the most fertile ideas, which are the ones that actually exist. Like the things that actually happened, the things that actually came out of your equipment and your room and your day. And like, yeah, so, so I mean, we build our craft so that when we engage in the process of trying to realize ideas, all the other stuff that accidentally happens is actually really cool. Um, not necessarily to get the idea exactly as it was in your brain. So that's really interesting. And there's two things I want to ask. And one is, so with that approach, you never have to feel like you need to have ideas. So you can never just sit down and go, I've got no ideas today. You can always just start doing something and reacting to it. And then the second thing question is, have you noticed that I'm like, it seems like uh, more and more people have this experience. I'm talking about students that I've had, especially younger saying that like i can't think of anything to do i've got no ideas i'm totally blocked i can't come up with ideas i like made some music and it was great and now i can't think of anything else to do have you noticed that that seems to be becoming more common i don't know about an increase but it's rampant there's yeah. a ton of that i think it's a, a huge issue with people's relationship to music and the arts i mean engaging in learning music or making music is uh, unique. It's a unique thing. Um, I mean, it's in the same category as some other things. So, but like 
what I what I want to say is just that we 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 are um, in so many ways uh, always um, objective, making things as objective as possible, and we really like uh, we really like things to make sense. Um, but I think when something makes sense. Uh, when it comes to music, it, it well, what I want to say is there's a lot of stuff that just does stuff to you, but you don't know what exactly or why. And, and that is actually really fertile ground for music. Um, so, so an example could be like, um, there could be this idea, this feeling you have that is hard to put into words and and you try really hard and at in the process of putting it into words you shrink it immensely uh this is something personally i think that is responsible for why there's so many religions that more or less say the same thing but with very different words and very different books there might be like one feeling that they're all talking about that maybe is like a really common big feeling but like once you prescribe it to like a cer certain set of events or a certain deity or whatever, it shrinks it because it makes it so specific that you miss the pre-verbal, pre-concrete goop that we like experience that we don't even realize is shaping our worldview and our emotions and, and so much. I'm, I, I like, I've been making videos lately that are just aiming at the goop really trying to use words as little as possible or have the words just help you like know that you're safe but like really talking about that mushy feeling world that um you know watching politicians debate about issues is like the opposite of and we really are we're like really focused on that for obvious reasons but we gotta like also have the nourishment of that weird juicy shit or stuff <laughs> you know <laughs> cool that makes total sense watching your videos lately that is a really interesting behind the scenes kind of isabella says your videos are such freaking masterpieces and that's, thank you isabella i agree i'm glad that <laughs> the language is working for you because i feel like when people say something nice about someone else it's a it's a good on them because it's what isabella is experiencing when by saying my videos are masterpieces, it's more that Isabella is open to noticing something good in the world and opening, open to noticing something good that someone else did. It's actually less about the quality of my video and more about your openness to receive a message from someone else. I think a lot of us have this idea of jealousy or comparing ourselves to others that prevents us from enjoying things. Um, so good on you. <laughs> that's cool did you ever have an experience of complimenting someone like on their art or something like someone you went to school with this always used to happen oh that's you made that that's brilliant and they'd be like no it's not it's terrible and you're just yeah, like oh people are like that so yeah. then you think but my taste is terrible <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> it makes you feel bad yeah then. exactly it's it, it makes you feel bad for complimenting them and, <laughs> you know and just like people are so fixated on oh i don't have ideas and i need to get ideas People are also fixated on needing to be good, needing to be bad. And so then they come up with this idea that there are geniuses and the, the light is on for those people. And for everyone else, it's just dim or it's off. And, and it's, I think it's just a ridiculous idea. Uh, like the difference in intelligence from the smartest person to the dumbest person is probably much, much smaller than we perceive. We think that like tiny gap accounts for so much. But it's like everybody can make good music. I've had plenty of students and friends and like just people I've known go from being like, I don't know that they're, they're, I don't know what exactly this is supposed to be. It's, it's like sounds un, undercooked or whatever. A few years later, they're making the best stuff and you're just like, what happened? People are so surprising. So people get how good at singing too. How about all this? These things. We, there's a question from Daryl. We'll take that one. And then how about we try and we get everyone just to put random words in the chat and then we'll just 
pick a few of them and then make some music out of them. Cool. All right. So this is kind of like all age groups are here. Younger students are watching too. So make it family friendly words, everyone. But just think of random words and put them in the chat. And uh, first though, Daryl's question while you're doing that. Is there a universal way to express the goopy juicy stuff? What do you think? I think fundamentally no. And that's part of the fun of it. Like, I, I think you can evoke it out of someone else. Like evoke, like you can get them to think about their goop, but I don't think you can be like, here's exactly my goop and now you get it. It's more just like, we both have goop and it's in this direction. But I, I don't, I think once we, once we like, uh, have like a universal understanding of something we're really tricking ourselves into thinking that like you never really know someone you only know the version of them that makes it through all their filters but it's very hard to to see what what's going on it's completely hard to know like who someone is inside of their head and it's like almost silly to try to know that it's better to try to just feel the depths to which people misunderstand you and then understand that you're not understanding them just as much and and that's what the goop's about you know <laughs> okay here we go random words <laughs> i'm gonna all right how about the first three harpsichord geography and duster cool so if we were to make music from those three words we've got one word that immediately rings out timbre which is the harpsichord which is bright and staccato and then what was the second one? Geography. Geography just makes me think of the color green. Um, and I'm just going to go with like my first reaction. And then uh, duster, to me, that means delay is going to be there. So, so, you know, just immediately translating it into musical descriptors is a pretty, it might be a very simple way to, to go about this, but I think it's a pretty, um, uh, there's a lot of ways that even though it's simple, a lot of ways that it could evolve and a lot of ways it could become deeper interesting. So my approach to something like this is I like to use a looper, um, a loop pedal, because um, it's nice to not have to hold the rhythm together and hold everything together and do everything solo guitar because it's, it's just kind of a bummer for me. So when I, we're talking about this uh, staccato harpsichord stuff, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that, and then the color green to me is just I'm like immediately in like a uh, more major -y space than a minor -y space because the green is reminding me of foliage, especially within the context of geography, and then the dust is going to be coming in a little bit, but I have an idea for that. <laughs> some dust going. So a lot of 
um, ideas are quickly abandoned in that process. And it's just like, well, what's actually happening? And, you know, I can cling to geography in some specific way, like green, grass, blah, blah, blah. But then once I started hearing what was actually happening, it becomes much more about big structures, like, um, uh, like in an earthquake, what are those things called? Tectonic plates and stuff. And uh, yeah, like the, the, the way that the way that those words are guiding my ideas changes a lot as I actually hear what's actually happening. Um, and so then it's like, oh yeah, time for dust. And it's like, this is like dusty film or something. Like it's like old aged film. Where'd my sound go? Oh yeah, here it is. Just like, you know, a dusty record or something. Or, I don't know, just like the that broken vintage vibe. But yeah. Uh, so when you play with a looper, it's very common. This is like the most common thing that happens with, with loopers is you make a loop and it's not quite in time. And then you're like, ah, crud. And then you're like, I hate my loop. And then you go and you're immediately like, stop it, stop it. And then you just go and make another. But I like to sit with whatever terrible loop I made for as long as I can to see if I can make it good. And so... If it's a broken loop, it's like, well, maybe I can make a counterpoint to the brokenness. If it's a really good loop, then fine, easy. Uh, so like, yeah, if I if I were to make a loop that's just like kind of like, oops, and now it's like, as as long as that is in, as long as that sound is happening, um, then we've got polka dots and then when it's not happening we can have really anything else so we could have some darkness maybe i'll get some ambience something really wet to counteract the uh, polka dots that's pretty nice and the polka dots are going to be i think pretty unrelated to this because it's like e major e yeah but i'm playing I'm playing an F major seven, so a little bit of theory happening now, but this is going to be pretty contrasting. And oh yeah, you can see. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> cool. So when you were playing on the words, you were kind of demonstrating the idea that there are initial factors that make something happen and then there's reactions to it, which they don't necessarily have to stay. And if you're improvising for longer, you'd probably go further and further away from them and you wouldn't have to keep going. Now it has to be just the yes. Yes. Exactly. And at the end of the day, all that matters is the sound you're making. You know, who cares about geography, dust, uh, forget, oh yeah, harpsichord, like who, who, you know, it's, it's good to practice using those words and thinking about it and like reacting and getting yourself out of your zone. Like then, springboards. When you're getting out of your zone. Yeah. When, when you're getting out of your zone and you're playing stuff, make that the priority now, the sound, you know? Uh, but I like messing with loopers in this in this very like constant forgiveness way because like I, you know it's just so it's so ingrained in us with a, a looper it's just you're hearing back reality that's like you're hearing exactly what you just played and it's so ingrained in us to immediately judge it and be like can i do my awesome solo over this loop and it's like we get a chance to compose like something brand new when your first loop is what you actually use uh for a little while it's just what are this the stakes could not be lower this isn't surgery nobody cares no one's even gonna know like even in this stream i can make you know i've got it we got an audience here it's not exactly a zero pressure situation but i can make infinite mistakes with the loop and then who cares like everyone's gonna go and be like well now what's for dinner 
and if anyone's like, well, Ben's not really good at guitar. It's like, I don't, I don't think that hurts anyone. Like if people think I'm not good at guitar, I don't think that really uh, matters very much. <laughs> like I, I'm fine. I got my, I got a nice poster. I can just look at that. It's look how happy they are. It's cool. There's other things to care about. <laughs> but it's quite like a high goal or a like, great thing to achieve if you can make music in front of people and have it be almost like they're not there like a been some jazz gigs like where they just they're just like like they're having a cup of tea and chatting to each other mm -hmm. people could be there or they could be not there and just could you describe the difference for you if you were just on your own totally coming up improvising with loops and now where people are watching is it different I think and, I do a better job with an audience. Uh, yeah. Like, um, I do a better job accepting what I did because I'm so used to from, this is actually something that you can build as a skill. It's not just who I am. It's something I've learned over hundreds and hundreds of concerts. You know, the real advantage, it's a real loss that we can't play shows right now because the real advantage of playing shows is you get good at this one thing, which is no matter what happened, that was the music. And you have to pretend or just act, make it clear to the audience that they're safe. Like, like you aren't worried about the amp that just cut out and you don't know, you don't have another amp. What you do is the amp cut out, it's knocked over, you unplug your guitar, you're like, Woo! you get off the stage, you run to the sound booth and be like, I'm going to plug into the direct box because I just, my amp broke. <laughs> or you'd be like, I need an amp. Uh, and you know what, if the rest of the band is totally chill and you're not there and you, when you get back, you're like dancing while the person's fixing it and you're into it, people might be like, oh, the amp's not working, but I guess this, this is a cool thing. This is a nice part of the show that I, no one normally gets to see. I mean, I think a lot of us have been in an experience where we've been at a concert and we've seen something go wrong and then the band is cool about it. And it's like, yeah, like a string breaks and then they like switch and that's fun, like the walking on a tightrope and then not falling thing. That's a really nice uh, entertainment value thing. So, yeah. That kind of that kind of reminds me of uh, something I taught a while back. Is like that if you're recording music like in a studio, then your whole focus is really on making it sound as good as possible. Every you can do it in non-real time. Every like moment of it can be thought about and arranged. And whereas like at a live gig, the almost the more improvised it is, the better because the risk is there that the audience can feel it. Yeah. Which is kind of goes with what you're saying there. Yeah. I, I think that w one of the reasons why we have so many production techniques, delay throws, cool timbre changes, wide stuff, narrow stuff. The reason there's so much like, the reason we're so inclined to, to work on these things with the sound is to, in in some ways, make up for the built-in variety of sound, like things changing and things happening that you get when you're at a concert. Like, you hear a lot of it with your eyes, because most of the concerts we go to have subpar sound. Like, there's a reason why a great sounding room or a great engineer is special it's because mostly most of the sounding the rooms don't sound that good or the engineers maybe aren't don't care that much a lot of them do um it's not really fair you know depends what level of the business you're on because like theater engineers tend to care a lot um but yeah like um uh what was i saying the what was I just talking about? I was like, oh God, I don't want to insult the engineers. Oh yeah, right, right. When you're, when you're seeing the show, a lot of your pleasure comes from seeing all that energy and change and things moving and the lights. And then when you're just listening to an album, you need that same amount of change and energy. So it comes from production techniques. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not just compensation. It's a whole other art form. Like, like, it, like let's say your song is the story, the recording, the album is the movie version of that story. And then the live show is the theater version of that story. So you can have the same story, Les Mis or whatever, but like the two should be different. They're just different things. Well, we do another improv. Sure. Here's three. Do you want like one word or three words or what? Loads of words. 
Um, yeah, we could do, uh, we, we could do, let's do one word and see how deep we can get. Into okay, one okay. Word. What about wonder? Cool. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Thanks. So, yeah, the wonder to me it immediately made me uh, feel like I was thinking about the idea that um, the closer you look at something and the longer you look at it, the more you can appreciate what it is. And so I was like, let's take our time, really take a long time with a note for a while and like dig in and um, I do think generally, you know, attention is like a form of love. And if you give one or two notes a lot of attention, then it's like, it kind of fills it with this sort of appreciation and, uh, and wonder. And uh, before I forget, actually, can you angle your camera a little more so you can see both your hands when you're playing? Sorry, I'll angle my chair up or I'll just do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, wow. Thanks. And um, when is there a process of translating ideas into chords and chord sequences that's happening there, either by thinking or just naturally just happens? There's definitely now? a big limitation, which is that that harmonizer patch is in A, mi a major. And so I'm ah. sticking to A major for sure. Um, it's kind of fun, though, like to go out. Like here's in, here's out in again so it mm. kind of fills in the gaps and, you know it doesn't just crap out it's like it sounds like some kind of diminished movement and mm. that's cool so, so i could do more so right <laughs> oh are you playing one note at a time there on the guitar and it's harmonizing it or are you playing note two notes it's harmonizing. you're playing one note oh cool triads like this is like 
I think it's like five, one, three. Okay. So this is a D major, F sharp minor, D major, you know. So like if you have a yeah. chord progression like one, four, five in A, you can just play the roots. If I turn off the delay, it'll be a little more fun. You can really hear that. <laughs> Cool. That's some good stuff. I love playing with that patch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fun, yeah. all right. <laughs> and when do you remember what you were playing there and wonder what? Where did you start in the? In Started that? with the F sharp minor triad, I think, giving us a nice yeah. foundation because I was going to be A majors, relative minors, F sharp minor for those people who are at home who don't know about these things it's the uh, same key for a major and f sharp minor and what makes them different isn't what notes are in them but it's like which note feels like home so in a major we're home here now I can have the exact same notes. Da, 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 And we're home here. Da, 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 And that would be F sharp minor. It's just now we're really prioritizing. As the home. And so I was playing in that F sharp minor and starting out by looping the F sharp minor. I knew, like one of my tricks, like to, uh, make music the way I like uh, is on my looper you can have it record at half speed and then play it back at double speed so I had it, everything going actually in this case I had everything going at full speed uh, and then I would make it half speed and then it goes down an octave and then you can get really dramatic and you can record yourself while it's at half speed and then when it goes up to full speed again, you've got that high thing. Really, really cool stuff. And like all that, if you follow my channel, I've been doing a lot of fake guitar this year, which is basically just a, a joke, but it, it's not really fake. Um, but it's just when you record at half speed and, and double it and it sounds fast and it's just a distinct sound, but like... sharp minor a major there um but that kind of stuff is really fun yeah like recording yourself playing stuff and speeding it up it sounds better oh yeah it's much better <laughs> like check out how cool this sounds check out how cool it, just something like like that doesn't sound bad or anything but look at this sounds so cool so hard <laughs> I love that's that. cool that's really it never fun. gets old either. <laughs> I've been doing it for months now <laughs> cool David was saying the guitar timbre there on the last piece reminded him of some stuff we heard on David Lynch's solo album oh cool I haven't He's heard got that the slide going right I think uh, a lot of slide I've got a little slide ring here. Um, these are fun. Uh, just you can still open and close your hand, but you've got a little slide. Um, I've right. got one of those. I've got one of those. Nice. The Will Ray uh, slide thing. Yeah. That's you can get real David Lynch with that. You go. And then uh, what else would David Lynch sound be? Uh, it'd be like, oh, if I had my synth hooked up. Well, anyway, side note. <laughs> so uh, let's, <laughs> a question, a question from Joseph Alvarez. 
given everything that is going on and the lack of interaction with most of the physical world, how have you stayed inspired to create? Great question. So it hasn't been a straight line. It hasn't been perfect. Um, you know, uh, I was thinking a little bit about like how, uh, well, here's, here's, let me just kind of talk you through my problems. <laughs> uh, I was thinking like, geez, everything I care about is pretty trivial. Uh, everything that all of the things I worry about are trivial. There's huge, huge issues going on that affect way more people. And, and I feel kind of powerless to deal with them personally. I, I do like my little bit that I can maybe, but like, why should I write any music about my like sadness or my problems or my experience when like no one needs to be thinking about me right now? Why should I be posting anything online? No one really needs to be thinking about me right now. And all of that is correct, except that it's not very helpful. Like I found that um, what's what I, what like, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's helpful um, to make people laugh if you're able to. It's helpful to get people excited about music if you're able to. Um, it's helpful to make things to help people look forward to stuff because, you know, there are billions of people who don't have the setup in their house to watch YouTube videos and don't see my stuff. And what I was thinking before is like, that's very sad that they can't see YouTube, but assuming that they are sad and is like kind of condescending, like, like they might, it might be our duty to make sure every place has the infrastructure to have the internet for sure. And like, it's not right that like some countries have a lot of wealth and others don't, but like assuming that other people are so sad that like, why should I do anything? Wasn't really helpful. I think to them, they don't even like think about who, no one's thinking about me. Like that. Why should anyone think about me? So anyway, this is a very complicated thing to verbally express. Um, but my point is that I was feeling very unencouraged to share stuff because it all seemed trivial. Every civilization is fundamentally headed towards collapse at some point, even if it's very long from now, even if it's very soon, it's like everything dies, we all die. So rather than thinking like, what's the point? It's more like, um, oh man, we have to make the time when we're actually alive worth it. We have to like work really hard on that mission and there's lots of streams, lots of ways that people are working on that. So even if still just a privileged my, like f faction of society can enjoy my YouTube videos, I got to make sure that those people are positive and have good vibes and like are useful. And what if they're going to work as a as a nurse or something, that they're in a good mood when they're doing their really important job. And like, so the the old saying is, science and medicine and those sorts of things help increase our longevity, help pull humanity forward um, physically, and then the arts and entertainment make it worth it. And I just think that's really true. And uh, nobody ever benefited from a bunch of people who want to make beautiful stuff stopping in solidarity somehow, like fake solidarity. Like it's much better just to like, volunteer locally or in some way volunteer get involved in helping people in like a literal like nonprofit. this is what they do kind of way and also making your stuff than it is to be like i need to i need to like self-flagellate in this performative way that's useless to everyone so well I hope to, that helps you joseph <laughs> and to bring it back to like the point from earlier on is if music is consistently enhancing your mood 
and it can do that for you. It can do that for anybody who's interested in it and wants to do it. Like that's one of the big reasons why I teach people music. And that's why I love this livelihood. It's yeah. really for me at this point, consistently makes me feel better. And I want other people to get that out of it too. It's hard to be a Nazi when you're happy. <laughs> Like, I don't think people who are fulfilled take on those kinds of idea ideologies. They, they seem to be very, very frustrated, unhappy people. And, like, there is something basic to helping create uh, positive communities online. Like, every music YouTube channel that is oriented around teaching music or sharing the love of music is one more big online thing that isn't about like making up problems that don't exist and blaming scapegoats you know like there's a lot of good that comes from uh good vibes on the internet because there's so much like the internet is like a huge part of the problem with the world so we like i always i often have been thinking and talking about being a social media artist which is you go onto social media to fix it with the content not to just be another liker getting lots of likes but like you go like if you're going to make an instagram post it should be for instagram in other words it should be something that makes instagram more entertaining and interesting and and positive not the kind of post that necessarily always performs well but something that makes instagram a better platform and if you're going to go and make YouTube videos, it should be something that makes YouTube a better place. And even though they're like, I, I can't stand social media. I think it's, uh, it's become a horrifying thing that is totally out of control, but it has so much power over us. And artists have a lot of power in that space. Uh, so we should try to fix it like we should we like we should try to make it a positive experience like instead of seeing a bunch of people posting like look at how rich i am or like how fancy my shit is my stuff is you go in there and you post something that makes people laugh or makes people like get an idea or something that's pretty <laughs> that people be like oh i'm that's positive you know <laughs> Uh, it's it's one of my classic rants. Good uh, words, good words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Five to ten minutes left. Will we do another improv? Absolutely. Two more words. How about two words? I saw these two, and they look like quite nice contrasting words: gossamer cool. and statistics. Nice. What does the first one even mean? Gossamer. I don't know, but I think of like very thin threads, like just floating okay. all over the place. Gossamer. I like that. Very like thin. That. And then statistics. It's very cool. techno. I like that. I like that. Let me think of a way I can make. Yeah, I guess I I don't have the setup to do keys on this, but that's okay. We'll, we'll improvise. <laughs> um, all right. Just a sec. I'm going to get the decay time of my reverb really long. This is for those threads. Get real long and real loud. All right, there we are. And I'm gonna use the slide for continuity. Okay, and I'm I'm ready. Those long threads and those stats.
Amazing. Amazing. Thanks. Joseph Dabrowski says amazing too. Oh, that was, hey. a, that was a great comments there coming in. That was, I really, really enjoyed that one. Gossamer. Me too. That was super yes. fun. Uh, I was thinking of like a montage with the, all the numbers, you know, oh. it's like a Twitch filter or something. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. It's did really you ever to improvise for an audience? Really. Did you ever think of becoming a Twitch streamer who just improvises every night and get people just watching? And you'd probably do well and get loads of people watching. Well, that's that's a really good idea. Um, I always thought of Twitch doing a Twitch stream. If I did a Twitch stream, it would have to be something that I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought of it very in a very like what do I want to do? And then let's start with that. Cause I would really like to improvise on Twitch. Why wouldn't I do that? I guess I, I just assume, I, I think somewhere I assumed in my head like that no one would like, people wouldn't really be interested in that for very long, but like, uh, that's good vibes. I'm getting good vibes, you know? Uh, I, yeah, it's a really good idea because that would fulfill a real, performance kind of bug I have and I've always wanted to just do improv shows um, I used to do improv shows like my, my whole band it would be like up to seven people we would improvise the whole set and under the premise that we weren't improvising like we would tell the audience we got a whole set of new songs tonight um, because if they knew we were improvising maybe they would uh, you know interpret it differently but I don't know, now I feel comfortable just telling people we're, we're improvising and that could be bad. And have you done Great any, you. have you done any live stream improvising, like group improvising or solo improvising? Not really. This That's one, this one tonight. Yeah. First time. This would be, be, this would probably be my second one yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I mean, I used to have a show called Let's Practice when I was trying to get myself to practice. And I would stream on there and, and we would improvise some things in it. But uh, yeah, this is this is the first time anyone has specifically been like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing that's fun, maybe a future guest will do this, is you have people type in words and then you have to read them and wrap it. Like oh. you have to read it in time like <laughs> with a flow. And, and you have to trust the people in the chat to be good. Lisa says, ooh, like the music version of Marine. Oh, Ab Abramovich. Oh, like, like meet yes. the artist. It would be really cool. Oh, like just be constantly there all the time, just improvising. Nice. Just every day, just on Twitch, like even when you're eating your dinner, just improvising. Yeah, that would be, that'd be quite a life, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Marina Abramovich is awesome. Yeah, big time. Did you ever go to see her in New York at that exhibition? I haven't seen her yet, but I do have some friends who saw her there and they had to walk through a room of like a door of naked people. Like they had, that's a interesting. It was like there were naked people at the door and like they were standing really close to you and you had to like walk through them. Weird. That's already, you know, really intimate <laughs> experience in an art museum. Pretty interesting. Cool. So we kind of have come to an hour and I'll say thank you very much to everybody for coming. We will start to wrap it up now. There's one question from Theo, which uh, we'll squeeze that one in. Sure. And uh, then we'll say good night to you all, even though you're most here in the afternoon and different times, but it's nighttime here. <laughs> so uh, it's dark here. So good night. guitar night. But yeah, exactly. It wouldn't sound good if it was guitar afternoon live. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> Theo's. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, he, Theo had a comment there. I'll just boil it down to, would you mind talking about the making of Freak Machine, which really oh, sure. reinvigorated him as a musician and as a oh, person so as well. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so Freak Machine is a piece of music I wrote in 2009. Um, it's, for anyone who is unfamiliar with it, which is many people, uh, it's a, uh, um, it's one piece of music separated into four and a half movements um and it's about uh the experience a person has as 
they are dying as a bullet goes from one side of their head to the other and it's this 40 minutes or 30 minutes of that and back then you know I was I was around a lot of people who were having all kinds of uh, it, like romance related issues and I had a bunch of romance related issues so the main focus of it is how possessive we become and how we feel really entitled to another person's love and how we make ourselves crazy when we believe in this idea of unrequited love which is definitely not what lo like it's not a form of love it's an in form of infatuation and so I have this character who is all of the most desperate horrifying ridiculous insane thoughts that I and my friends were having about people who weren't romantically interested in us it was, it's basically you could think of it as incel the musical today and but the, but the thing is it's meant to be healing in a way by presenting all these things at, in a very like um, absurd over the top crazy uh, uh, piece and at the end it's it's very dark and very funny at the same time, I think. And so it's one big joke in a way, but, but that doesn't make it unserious, you know? Uh, so, so I'm really glad it reinvigorated you. And, um, and that is exactly what it's for. It's meant to get people out of a mental rut and get excited and, and wild. I missed the beginning part, but what is Freak Machine? It's a 30 piece, minute piece of music I wrote uh, in 2009 that um, is like about a person's experience as a bullet is going through their head and uh, and figuring out why, the brain slowly figuring out why it's in that position. And is it in like, is it released piece of music? On yeah, it's it's on Spotify and everything. Uh, ben Levin, Spotify or Bandcamp. Even cool. Better. But um, we'll yeah, check it out. Let's check it I got out. A whole bunch of stuff up there, and yeah, if I were to recommend one thing I've written for people, it's the wave that got away. I'd say or Jelly Mounds. Those are the ones I'm the most excited about right now. Cool. Um, but you know, enjoy at your own pace. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a. I'll put a link to your band Thanks. camp. I like band camp. It's the best. Yeah, it's best. It is best. And hopefully <laughs> people will start just getting used to listening to the Bandcamp app on their phones and stuff. And, and yeah. Bandcamp will get stronger and stronger. It's very that's what, or, or, you know, like I buy things on Bandcamp and then listen to them on yeah. Spotify because that doesn't matter. You can do I've that. I've never done that switch it to Spotify thing, but I love it. I, I think buying music is a nice thing to do. It's yeah. definitely not uh, like it's definitely not weird to not do it, but it's nice when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much, Ben. This was great. This was uh, really cool. I'm going to hit the stop button and stop the recording. Right. And well, it might thank happen. You, it might all just stop then, but if it doesn't, we can chat a tiny bit more before, but if, if not, if it just, if I freeze and it's ended, then goodbye and talk to you soon, I'll send you an email. Let's see.